So I am really excited to talk for a few minutes about standard for NFA1 because it is such a power standard that links students' initial experiences working with fractions from third grade and really bridges them into performing operations with fractions and solving problems with whole numbers um, that have fractional solutions in fifth grade. So at the heart of this standard is equivalency. Um, as a student in fourth grade for this standard, I need to be able to explain why if I have a fraction and I multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the same number, that the new fraction that I've created is equivalent to the original fraction. And by equivalent, I mean specifically will be located at the same point on the number line. So not only do students need to be able to create the equivalent fraction using the procedural skill of multiplying by a fractional representation of one whole, for example, two halves or three thirds, they also need to be able to explain how they are equivalent and represent the same part of a whole using visual fraction models. And I say that because I want special emphasis on it. The algorithm of multiplication is sort of the how that is new, but the visual models that we're building on from third grade are sort of the why that we want to constantly be coming back to and connecting. Um, this standard requires mastery of third grade NF standards in which students first begin reasoning about fractions and reach the understanding that fractions um, that label the same point on a number line are equivalent and use visual models like fraction strips to prove them. Um, they use other models such as number lines to locate unit fractions and uh, fraction bars, fraction strips, in some cases area or length models, and even in some cases Venn diagrams to recognize and generate equivalent fractions. Um, and they use those equivalent fractions to make comparisons um, and reason about size. Jump to the other side, in fifth grade, they're gonna need competency in 4NFA1 in order to master their later work, one with denominators of 10 and 100, so tenths and hundreds, which links to mastery of place value and decimal concepts in fifth grade, um, as well as fraction operations with unlike denominators, which they are going to see a lot of. Um, by fifth grade, we're asking students not only to operate with fractions, but to see fractions as a division problem where they'll divide whole numbers with fraction solutions. So this is a big one. Let's talk now about misconceptions that students are likely to have when they're engaging in this work. One, something that throws kids off is that things with different numbers can be the same size. The numbers are different, the sizes must be different. Um, and this is why visual models are something that I would expect to see heavily emphasized in a standards aligned classroom where students were learning to mastery and would, would coach a struggling teacher first around visual models um, before anything else for this unit. Um, another thing that students might struggle to understand um, that I've seen is that when I multiply by the same number in the numerator and the denominator, I'm actually multiplying by a fractional form of one, which is why the number of pieces changes but the amount represented does not. It's common that if a kid sees that I'm multiplying the numerator by two and the denominator by two, then I must be multiplying by two, but no. I would expect in a standards aligned um, classroom for a teacher to be emphasizing the key point in, in one of the following ways. So they, it says they say something like, so, so I multiplied the top by two or the numerator by two and the denominator by two. What fraction is that that I'm multiplying by? and you would expect the student's answer to be two halves. Um, and, and then the next question should be, and what is that equal to? Answer, one whole. So what am I really multiplying by? One whole. Which is why they are what? Equivalent. And so I would be wanting that key point to be emphasized a lot in a standards aligned classroom, and it's something that I would work to coach teachers towards if I wasn't hearing it. Um, I would also then push that teacher to say, okay, you know you're multiplying by one whole, you know this fraction is equivalent based on that, prove it to me using a visual model. Um, another misconception that students bring to the standard is that uh, when I multiply, the answer gets bigger, and when I divide, the answer gets smaller. Students will see the algorithm for multiplication in creating their new fraction, um, but believe that the new fraction is bigger because the numbers in the fraction are larger. Um, again, in a standards aligned classroom, I would expect to see a teacher emphasizing that we're always multiplying by a fractional form of one, and that if I multiply a group by one, the size of the group does not change, even if the number of pieces may change. 
Um, and I think another way that we see students struggle with this standard happens, especially when students start comparing two or more fractions that need um, equal denominators in order to compare. So too difficult to compare by um, whether or not they're greater or less than a half or using some other benchmark fraction. Um, often they'll multiply by the denominator only because they know the denominator needs to change, but they'll leave the original numerator unchanged in their fraction. Um, this again goes back to the key point about multiplying by one or fractional equivalent of one and would expect to see teachers address this by emphasizing um, that, for example, if I only multiply the denominator by two, what I actually did was multiply the original fraction by one half. We would then locate the original fraction and the new fraction on the number line and prove that they're not in the same location and therefore are not equivalent. Um, and fifth, a final misconception um, that teachers have to plan for is that fraction models are extremely beneficial, but they are often challenging for students to draw accurately, especially if they didn't get a significant amount of practice with this um, to mastery in third grade. Um, so when planning, teachers should consider challenges such as creating equal pieces and drawing the right number of lines to create the right number of pieces um, and sort of logistical things like that. Um, Overall, my major message to teachers around the standard would be that when a model comes in tandem with an algebraic method, as it does in 4 and F1, where we're sort of marrying this visual that we've been learning in, um, in third grade, and we're sort of now bridging it with this sort of algorithm in fourth grade so that we can get ready to do some real hard math in fifth grade with fractions, um, that these should be, the visual has to be explicitly connected to the algorithm. Um, for students and created simultaneously so that students understand what the model represents. Teachers should avoid moving too quickly to an algebraic method before completely exploring concepts with visual models or explicitly showing why a procedure works. To this end, teachers should not mark student work as correct when their fraction is right but doesn't match the model that they've created to represent it. And additionally, students should not be creating equivalent fractions without drawing models every time. Um, so visual models where kids are showing how they're decomposing fractions, there's a clear connection um, between that and the number sentence they're writing. That's what I want to see in a strong standards line classroom. Um, and, and, and as a final sort of thought, teachers um, also need to be coached to use unit language consistently, um, which students should already be familiar with from their whole number work. Um, a common mistake that teachers will make is saying things like uh, multiply by two when students are actually multiplying by two halves and then that sort of like deepens the misconceptions around that fractional equivalent of one. I look forward to hearing from you.